الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله all praise be to Allah, the Almighty, the Magnificent, the Merciful, the Gracious, from whom we seek protection and refuge against our evil doings, against our wrong doings. If we are guided by Allah to the straight path, as-sirah, Al Mustaqim, then nobody else will get us deviated from the straight path. On the other hand, if we are not guided by Allah to the straight path, then nobody else will get us back to the straight path but Him. Arsalahu bil haqqi bashira wa nadiran bayna yaday sa'ah. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. <laughs> La ilaha illallah. The oneness of Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam is his messenger that has been sent by Allah to all mankind. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to all mankind. We must follow the rules of Allah and we must apply the teachings of our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If we follow the rules of Allah and apply the teachings of His Prophet, peace be upon Him, then we will be guided to the straight path. Otherwise, we should not blame but ourselves. Amma ba'd. فَإِنَّ خَيْرَ الْكِتَابِ كِتَابُ اللَّهِ وَخَيْرَ الْهُدَى هُدَى مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَآلِهِ وَسَلَّمُ The best book ever revealed to human beings is the Holy Quran. It has been sent by Allah to all mankind. It has been revealed to our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the best book. It has been promised by Allah that it will be kept unchanged, unaltered till the day of judgment. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafihun. It is we who revealed this book and it is we who, who is going to protect it till the day of judgment from being changed or altered. And the best guidance is the guidance of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Dear brothers and sisters, the number of Muslims in the whole world has passed 1.5 billion Muslims. Almost 20% of the whole population in this earth are Muslims. But, on the other hand, are Muslims playing a significant role in developing this whole world? The answer is no. We are not playing a significant role in developing this whole world. Why? There are so many reasons. One reason is because we lack the sense of direction. And we lack clear goals. Although some people say that we do have goals, but unfortunately, we lack the sense of directions how to achieve these goals. Dear brothers and sisters, goal setting is very important in the life of Muslims. And they should be set in a very well-balanced way. A great companion, Salman al-Farisi, may Allah be pleased with him, 
was advising another companion, Abu Darda. May Allah be pleased with him. He told him, Inna li rabbika alayka haq, wa inna li ahlika alayka haq, wa inna li badanika alayka haq, fa'a'ti kulla fi haq in haq. What a great advice, which teaches us that our goals have to be distributed in three directions in a very well-balanced way. The first direction is towards Allah. People nowadays call spiritual goals. And the other direction is towards the society and our families. And the third direction is towards ourselves in a very well-balanced way. Let me just give you some examples. There are goals that are common to all Muslims. They should keep doing them. Such as, for example, praying the five day prayers, fasting the holy month of Ramadan once a year, attending Friday prayer once a week, paying charity zakah for the needy people once a year, and going, if possible, to Mecca for Hajj once in the whole life. Very specific, clear five goals that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu has mentioned in one of his sayings, Buni al-Islamu ala khats. That Islam is bent, is built on five pillars. Brothers and sisters, I am not talking today about these common goals that every Muslim should do. I am talking about also other goals that every Muslim should have. For example, in the area of spirituality, you can say, I need to memorize the whole Holy Quran in five years from today. This is one example, for example, of a goal that you don't have to do as a Muslim, but it is highly recommended by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And let's see this goal, very specific. I need to memorize the whole Holy Quran in five years from today. Very specific, very measurable, the whole Holy Quran. Very achievable and realistic and time-bound in five years. And I have chosen very strong words. I did not say, I wish to memorize the whole Holy Quran. And I did not say, I want to memorize the whole Holy Quran. I said, I need to memorize the whole Holy Quran. Use very strong words when you set your goals. Another example, say for example, in the area of families and society, you may have the following goal. I need to raise up one of my children to be a Muslim scholar in my country. Very specific, majorable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound goal. In the area of, for example, taking care of yourself, you may have the following goal. I need to take care of my health by practicing one type of sports once a week, for example. And see the number of words that I'm using for each goal, very concise. It varies from 12 to 15 words as experts say. If you would like to have a clear goal, the number of words that you should use varies from 12 to 15. Experts nowadays say so. So, for example, when you say, I need to memorize the whole Holy Quran in five days from today, these are 13 words. Very nice and specific goal. Brothers and sisters, setting goals in life is something which is all and practiced by our prophets themselves throughout history. All prophets 
have one common goal that is la ilaha illallah the oneness of Allah spread this word of Allah among their people the oneness of Allah la ilaha illallah and the full submission of oneself to the will of Allah and this is what Islam means Islam means the full submission Islam nafsi the full submission of oneself to the will of Allah this is a call that have been practiced by all prophets including our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam our prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam also used to have goals in his life varieties of goals goals that have to be achieved today when he said لا يصلينا أحدكم اليوم إلا في بني قريب. No Muslim must pray Asr prayer today except at the lands of Bani Qurayb. Bani Qurayb is the name of a Jewish tribe, and this is a goal that has to be achieved by all Muslims in that army, the Muslim army, on that day. Very specific that needs to be achieved on that day. Other goals that have been set by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to be achieved next day when he said in the year seven after Hijrah in the Battle of Khaybar when the victory was delayed he said La ur'tiyanna ar-rayata yawma khadim rajulan yuhibbu Allah wa Rasul and next day the flag of the Muslim army was pushed to Ali ibn Abi Talib, karam Allah wajah. May Allah be pleased with him. And he told Ali, oh Ali, indi wa la taltafit hatta yaftah Allah ala yadik. What a great prophet. He used to teach his followers on how to set goals and on how to achieve those goals. Oh Ali, the goal is very clear. That is to lead victor to Muslims in this battle. So go and don't be distracted by the environment. Don't be distracted by things here and there. Don't be distracted by people. Just focus on your goal. Focus on your goal until it is achieved by the will of Allah. There are goals that have been set by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that need to be achieved next year. When companions went to our Prophet Muhammad, may Allah be pleased, peace be upon him, and told them, O oh, Prophet of Allah, we are fasting the tenth day of Al Muharram, Ashura. And the Jews are also fasting that they would like to be different. He told them, La in baqitu ila qabil la asu mannat hasa. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives me long life till next year, I will fast the ninth day of Muharram and the tenth day of Muharram. This is a goal to be achieved in one year. And so on. There are other goals that have been set by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be achieved in specific time during his life or after his death أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد Dear brothers, there are goals that have been set by our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam that have been achieved after his death. One day he said regarding his grandson Al-Hasan ibn Ali, إِنَّ الْنِي هَذَا سَيِّدْ وَلَعَلَّ اللَّهَ يُصْلِحُ عَلَى يَدَيْهِ بَيْنَ طَائِفَتَيْنِ عَظِمَتَيْنِ and history proves that this goal was achieved in the year 41 
after Hijrah. This is 30 years after the death of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when his grandson Al Hassan ibn Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, has played a great role in gathering Muslims together. And that year was called Amul Jama'ah, that is the year of gathering. We should not lose hope, dear brothers and sisters. There are good signs, positive signs, here and there in some Muslim countries that show that we have started to set goals and we started to sense the sense of direction. Such as, for example, in Malaysia, there, are, there is a very good trial and attempt by the Malaysian people over there, and in Turkey, for example, and in Tunisia, for example. And specifically here in Kuwait, also there is a strategic plan that has been set five years ago in the year 2010 with six specific goals to be achieved by the year 2035. And a budget was approved for it. So Muslims have started to do something. But we just pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that these plans may be achieved in real life. Oh Allah, help us to achieve our goals and have sense of direction so that Muslims can play great role in developing this whole world. Allahumma hdina fi man hadayt wa aafina fi man aafayt wa tawallana fi man tawallayt wa barakillahumma lana